today on Divorce Court. I'm here on Divorce Court because my husband is a cheater and he doesn't trust me. I don't trust him. And he doesn't put in consideration my feelings. I'm here because of lies and disrespect and jail and endangerment from me going back to jail. I feel the need to call the cops on my husband so they can act as a mediator. Yeah, she put my life at risk every time she called her cops on me. I need for my wife to just listen and pay attention to the directions when I give her, because all I'm doing is trying to guide her. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Quintana King and Tyreek King. The two of you have been together for two years. You've been married for 19 months. You are currently expecting, uh, you're like seven months? Yes. Yeah, getting, re getting ready to have one. But you're having trouble, so you've come to me for some advice. Mrs. King, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here today? Well, I met Tariq on Halloween. When I first met him, his voice was very loud, so I was scared. And at the same time, I still was kind of attracted to him because it was different. I decided to hang out with him, but I wanted the supervision of my friends. Mm -hmm. And then very soon after, I felt comfortable. Um, we instantly kicked them to the side, and it was just him and I every day. That same night? Yeah. <laughs> that day forward, it was him and I every day after that. Uh-huh. And um, we were always by ourselves. And then about two weeks later, I wanted to... I hadn't had any relationships whereas a guy had done me wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I, everything's going well. We might as well just get married. Two weeks! We got married two months later. But I asked him two weeks later. You asked him? Yeah. 14 days in? Yeah. And is that not frighten you? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently not, because you did it. But, but, but two weeks, were you worried at all that she was jumping the gun or pressuring you? And what I've been through, it's like, I don't have no time to waste. So, all right. the two weeks, it's like, okay, why not give it a shot? All right, I got you, Mr. <laughs> King. Go ahead, Mrs. King. Tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was ecstatic. He agreed to marry me. Um, two months later, he was like, we're going today. I'm like, okay. So we went and got married. About a month later, I was going to work with him all the time. He mm -hmm. was delivering flowers on the Gold Coast and pizza in um, Chicago. So you would just ride along? Yeah. Okay. So then one day, he always complained that I'm taking too long, I'm taking too long. So he leaves me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'll get dressed earlier tomorrow. So tomorrow came, I got dressed earlier. He leaves me again. And this time, I want to know why. So I called the job. I got suspicious. The, one of the females at the job described another female to me. And it was Tariq's ex. So I was ecstatic. My feelings was hurt. You know, I'm like, we're married. Why did you take her to work? And he kept saying he couldn't talk, that he was charging up his phone. He needed the map. So I'm like, OK. And I burned up a sweater, and I put it inside of a tote with all his other clothes. So it looked like they all were ablaze when I sent the picture. But it really was just a sweater. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, but. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you didn't burn my, my shirt. shirt. I'm okay, hurt. but all right. Because <laughs> he kept talking about it. He wouldn't stop. And then I'm like, wow, you know, he was really upset about this. And I'm like, do you understand how I felt as well, though? And he goes, I had no reason to feel that way. He still denies it being other females. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask. Let's ask Mr. King what he was doing that day. Do you recall the incident? I'm sure you do, because you burned up your shirt. Can you repeat that, miss? Do, uh, do you recall the incident? No, nah, no. You don't, you don't recall her burning up your shirt? Yeah, I've been burning up my shirt, yes. Do you remember why she burned up your shirt? It was for assumptions and, and bull stuff that's going on floating up, man. She thought that I went up to my job with my ex right. and my kids, but my kids were with me. I right. even took photos with my kids with nobody else in the picture but them. So I went up to the job and everything was cool. And the next thing you know, I get home, I get an argument. And then before I get the argument, before I even get there, I get the pictures. I get the pictures sent to me. I'm looking at my phone like, why are my clothes burnt up? And like bleach and powder and everything on them. And then I'm on the understand. So I get to the crib, to the house and everything. So she tell me, you cheating. I'm like, how am I cheating? I was just with my kids. That's crazy. And then I, and then I try to go back to work. Mm -hmm. I went back to work and they fired me. She had called them and told them something. Do you always take family to work with you? My I think kids, that's odd. It was an extra side job, and my kids, they was like delivering pieces. So hanging out with you. Yeah, that's hanging not out a bad with kids, like seeing that go. Quality time I'll on the some road, money. making some money. I got you. <laughs> Can you tell me any other instances? Because I'm not convinced yet. 
any other instances where you believe Mr. King was cheating on you? There was an instance where he was sleeping in the car and some girl was calling his phone, so I answered it and she agreed to meet me at the gas station. So we go to the gas station, he wake up, like, why are you right here? And she asks him, what's up? And then he tell her he's at work. And I'm like, you're not at work, you're on a car with me, sleep. So then she said um, she just really was new to the area, she wanted somebody to hang out with and that somebody to sponsor her evening, pretty much. And I told her that I'm his wife, that that wouldn't be happening when she loses his number. And he said he was cool with, that, with her losing his number, so she agreed. So three days later, he goes back to her house. I followed the GPS, and I never been over there. I followed, put a GPS on his phone, I went over there. He's sitting in the car with her. So he see me, he gets upset, he tells her to get out the car or whatever. He come follow me, we go home. The next day, I put the GP, you know, GPS still on right. there. I follow the GPS, and they're not in the car today. This day, they're in her house. So I had took a brick, and I threw it, broke out the window. Mr. King, did all that happen? <laughs> well, this, this Were you in the car with some woman welcoming her to the neighborhood? Bring her to the neighborhood? Yeah, it was, she said she was new to the neighborhood and wanted to have somebody hang out with. So what's your version of that event? I, I think <laughs> whatever story she giving is as because if you start the story off with that's what's going to end up in the end. Because everything she ever done to me if I was like, get into argument. Like one time, we get into argument. I'm in the house, I'm like, okay, I ain't for the indulge in this. So I'm just walk away. I walk away, I get a million text messages to my phone showing me her conversation with a whole nother teller guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, that's crazy. And then another time, I get naked pictures of a guy I assumed her he been cheating on me with. And then one time, she ride past in a car with another guy with a middle finger talking about some mom. Yeah, tell everybody to come to the window. We come to the window when Tyler ran past another guy holding up my middle finger. I'm like, that's crazy. So... Let me up. ask you this. Did she ever break out a window with a brick? In a place where you were... Yeah, she was, I was riding Tell in the car. Tell me about that. We was riding in the car. Quintana being Quintana. And there was like five minutes before she snapped out. And then one of the men, we ride down, coming from the mall. We was coming from the mall, we just riding down Torrance in Chicago. So when we drive, we get to argue again. Because every time we talk to each other, we just... It's argue. an argument. It's an argument. Now, this argument led Quintana thinking that her feet is made of rubber like the wheels and the tires. So she <laughs> opened up the car door. I'm like, what you opening up the door for? So I stopped the car. She jumped out, throw something through the window, talking about tell that, tell that bitch to clean the back window now. I'm like, what? <laughs> Did you do that? Um. Oh, that's a yes. <laughs> that's a yes. That's a yes. My understanding, though, Mr. King, is you believe she's cheated on you as well, and I'm going to talk to you about that next. We, we get into an argument. What she'd do is try to hurt me emotionally. Okay. I'd like, send me what she been doing behind my back. I'd like, text messages from random guys that she either talked to, mostly her exes. Send me all the conversations. And then turn around a week later and say she was lying. So, Mr. King, you say Mrs. King has cheated on you. Why don't you tell me, give me some examples of what she's done? Like, once we, we get into an argument, she always want to, like, affect me in a different way. Like, she figures she can't put her hands on me. So what she'd do is try to hurt me emotionally. Okay. Fox, like, send me what she been doing behind my back. Files like, text messages from random guys that she either talked to, mostly her exes. Send me all the conversations... And then turn around a week later and say she was lying. I'm, I'm like, how is that a lie when you sending it to me? She said her and her cousin send some text messages back and forth to each other. I'm like, nah, don't nobody go through all that. Right. You telling me a lie again. Right. So she kind of keeping me all balanced. Right. Do you send him stuff to intention intentionally yeah. upset him? Yes. Ex and it becomes Give me Google. a list of the kind of things you send him. I know you send him burnt clothes. Yeah. I know you say, you know, what What else? So I'm upset, and I go on um, the internet, find a picture of a guy, probably be posing or something, and I'll send him a picture of him and tell him I know this person, and I don't know him. But that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is the most concrete evidence you've had that he's cheated on you? He had posted a picture himself on Valentine's Day of him and his ex She's way older. He dated an older lady before. And um, they were out to eat. 
and we were just married, and I'm like, why are you out with her on Valentine's Day? Are you going out with other women on Valentine's Day when I don't you're married? Do it it seems like every time a holiday come up, the devil come out of her, and she pushed me away. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna celebrate the holiday like that. I'm gonna go chill with my family. So that's what I gonna do. So you were chilling with your family. You weren't cheating with another woman. No, I wasn't cheating. If, if she even thinks, she think that because she did something wrong. She know that she sent me text messages telling me, showing me what she been doing. And then one time she gave me a story like, remember what time we was in Walmart? You turned this way, went that way. It sounds so correct. Right. The way she delivering it to me. And then all of a sudden she says a lie. I'm like, nah, I remember going to Al too. You did disappear. <laughs> 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 it makes sense. So, have you ever caught her cheating on you? Or is she just yanking your chain all of the time? I even proved to her that I don't want to cheat because I told her like this. Like, I left her. I simply left her. I'm like, everything I told her, like, everything you was assuming, mm -hmm. just, just remember in your mind why I'm leaving you, that's not true. I don't sleep with other women, because I, I did all that. I'm 35 years old. I'm, I'm really tapped out. I just, wanted, I just want somebody to love me and cook for me. Tapped out. That's it. I'm cool. <laughs> but she don't understand that. But when I left her, she said that I came back. So when I came back, I thought she would get it, but she don't get it. She doesn't get it. She don't get it. I would just totally leave. So you really never caught him, caught him, did you? Yeah, because, like, if I felt like he, his attention was somewhere else and then I call him on it and then two weeks later you gone... His attention was somewhere else. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, he doesn't re value my... He stopped valuing my opinion, stuff that I was saying. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I want to talk about something really important, though. My understanding is you are in the habit of calling the police on him. I want to know why you're doing it, when you're doing it, and what happens when you do. The wrong cop on the wrong day, he's all loud, and then he gets shot, and you were like, oh, I didn't mean that to happen. What is wrong with you? What would you do if you suspected your spouse was cheating but couldn't prove it? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Mrs. King, do you call the police on your husband? Yes, ma'am, I do. About how many times have you called? Maybe four. Four times. Now, let me ask you this, because this is very important. Is he putting his hands on you? Is he threatening you? Are you afraid of him? No, ma'am. I, I'm, sometimes I get afraid because how loud he is. I'm not sure if he's gonna... Today's the day he's gonna finally click. So I would call the cops. But when they come, it's like people that... I... Tell me a couple of stories about when you called the police on what happened and what caused you to call. Okay, I called the police because he... It would probably be like, I don't know, I'm resting. And Tariq would not be quiet. He didn't value what I, my opinion. So now he want me to hear his side of the story and I'm tuning him out. So now he's following me around just super loud. And I'm like, you know what? I don't have to... I can't calm you down. I can't make you listen to me. But the cops will. So if somebody's down the street getting robbed, they're over at your house talking to you about why he won't listen to your opinion. That's because it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Oh, Let me tell you something. <laughs> you get the wrong cop on the wrong day, he's all loud, and then he gets shot, and you were like, ooh, I didn't mean that to happen. What is wrong that. with you? Yeah. Holy cow! It's not what they're for! Every time I argue with her, every time I get loud, she, she learned how to set me up with the police to come. She could say, I'm not the bad guy. She on the phone, so I'm in there talking loud or whatever. Next thing you know, I could be laid in the bed. The police knocking on the door, throwing tasers there, looking with tasers. So I'm looking confused, like, why the police at the door? I never know why. And then I figured out, it's somebody that be calling on the phone, because I don't never see her doing it. I know she ain't that slick. So what, do you, do you get into an argument with him and then call somebody so they can hear that he's loud, hoping that they'll call the police on your behalf? That happened, like, two times with my cousin. They called the police. If they and you him. did that on purpose, right? I told him to be quiet. Like, I'm like, quit yelling. They gonna... I'm like, quit yelling. See, it's like a, the she's using it as a, a mechanism you for control. Mm -hmm. See, like, when a person feel like they can't put their hands on you and stuff like that, they use other ways, tactics to control right. you. But she don't understand that... I just did two and a half years in jail. 
And I'm not trying to go back there. Right. You put me in a situation like that, it's not jail, it's death now, because they didn't kill me. Right, right, oh. right, right. Are you still on probation or parole? No, nah, I'll complete that success. Oh, well, that's good. That's good, because no, if you no, put I had to go to no, Yeah, because he, they, they can put him back for just about anything yeah. if, he's on, if he's on paper. You know what I mean? So at least no, that's not the problem. I was anger management. I completed yeah. it. Yeah, well, good for you. Good for you. Let, let, I want to talk about communication. I want to talk about control. I want to talk, talk about manipulation. I want to talk about maturity. I can't even list everything I want to talk about, but I'm going to talk about a whole <laughs> lot of things. How would you react to your spouse calling the cops on you during arguments? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I need a week to get through to you, but I got two minutes, so I'm gonna do the best that I can. Thank you. Mrs. King, you need to grow up. And I mean right now, right now. You don't talk to anybody. What you do is you get 10 cents worth of information, and then you make a dollar's worth of assumptions about that 10 cents of information, and then you go off with that dollar's worth of assumption like you're a mad woman. You're, oh, two weeks he's been nice, let me marry him. Oh, you know what I mean? He's, his full attention isn't in my direction. Let me call another dude, act like that other dude is with me so I can hurt him because for five minutes I was distressed because I wasn't his number one priority. Good God, woman, you will never be happy. You will never be safe. And good Lord, I'm worried about that, baby. <laughs> this brother over here is, I'm talking loud because he's having art here. I don't want people to think I lost my mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this brother over here is tired. He has decided to sit down and be with a woman, and he decided that that woman is you. You need to pay him back with respect and some common sense. Burning up his clothes, riding by with your middle finger, throwing bricks, that is no way to build a home. No way whatever to build a home. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, that doesn't mean that you're without fault. I think you're a, you're a big dude, and if you get loud, I think you might spook me too. <laughs> and what I want to say to you is this. Men don't often realize this. But sometimes your size and your presence and your volume can be disconcerting to us. And it's not because you're mean or mad. It's because your volume is so expansive and extensive that it is frightening to us. And we're not saying you mean us wrong, but the idea, you got to take your size and your volume into account. You can't just say, I'm loud. You, can say, you have to say, I'm loud. And I get this, and I'm trying to talk to this woman who's, you know, half in the bag ain't got it together anyway. <laughs> so what you do is you sit down and say, baby, this is what I'm upset about. Realize how big you are. Realize how loud your, your voice is. And bring it down to a level that won't start no stuff with her. It doesn't mean you don't have the right to be angry. It's just that you have the wisdom not to display it. Because displaying it don't get you nowhere other than the business end of a taser. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yes. Did you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Did you hear me? Yes. I hope so. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> All right, after hearing what Judge Lynn had to say, I mean, you got a baby on the way. Are you ready to grow up? Yes. I mean, I'm ready to grow up. I feel like I always show initiative, and my action's always just a reaction to what he does. So what are you gonna do to stay together and make this work? I'm gonna take care of my responsibilities, but first I'm gonna get a blood test to take care of mine.